Hey everybody, welcome back. Northern Land plays the Binding of Isaac after Rift Plus. We've, we've been chunking together some pretty good runs lately and having uh, some pretty good funs lately as well. This is, uh, this is a strong start. Please die. Thank you. <laughs> Do it. Um, there's your seed, by the way. FWR3. 7... TJP. TPJ, sorry. Got a little... I don't have dyslexia, but I have Isaac seed dyslexia sometimes. Get the letters a little bit mixed up. I mean, they're not like where you would traditionally expect them to be. You know, they don't make words. And if, if it made a word, I would mind that for humor for like, you know, a hundred episodes straight. Um, so maybe we're lucky that it doesn't. We have the wafer, which is incredible. But the one thing I will say is that the wafer is like a trust fund, you know, is is going to make you very comfortable. But you got to wait a little bit. You know, you don't get access to that when you're eight years old. And thank God you'd spend it all on like ping pong tables. Can't imagine, dude. If I if I had like let, let's say hypothetically, not that you would ever do this, but if you if you gave me like a hundred thousand dollars when I was eight, what would I do? I was not like a very spendy child, um, but I still think probably all of it would have been. I would have like a hundred different arcade cabinets and I would be like it's a good investment because computers at home are never gonna be able to deliver the kind of powerful gaming experiences you can get at the arcade I would I would be looking at it now like you know I'll never financially recover from this Joe exotic mp4 I'll try it because there's two of them I'm willing to try it I like the speed upgrade too obviously um, but this run in general is is real nice. Um, you know the uh, the wafer combined with prayer card, HP not gonna be too much of a concern, you know, ever <laughs> moving forward for us. There may be some circumstances where we would prefer, like for example, in this situation we did not need to use a prayer card at the end of this floor. We could have saved it. Instead, for the start of the next floor, and maybe squeezed one extra HP out of it. But I honestly think we're kind of in this situation where, you know, it's always nice. It's it's never inadvisable, I guess, to min-max. Um, but it's probably maybe a little bit more than you need to do here. And I'm happy for, for the first time in a little bit, we seem to be almost, you know, rebuilding a, a pretty decent run. Or a pretty decent streak, I should say. Got a ways to go before it really gets too impressive, but excited either way to uh, to get some sauce on the on the ribs. Haven't had ribs in a while. I will say for dinner last night I had a very uh, irresponsible dinner, but it was delicious. It was we ordered some Korean fried chicken, and you gotta. You know, you, you kind of have this conversation sometimes. Fried chicken is like a classic example, I think, of what do you eat alongside it. You know, we grow up thinking, you, you can't just eat fried chicken for dinner. It's not a balanced meal. That I would definitely not disagree with. However, it, it's like, are you really going to order, like, french fries alongside of it or something like that? It doesn't really balance the meal out, right? If anything, it kind of just... <laughs> It adds more nutritional badness on top, although I'll admit, delicious as well. Um, so nah, we just like, like in pure collegiate style, just ate Korean fried chicken for dinner last night. And there was like so much of it. I actually, I hate to admit it, but I love to admit it. Had a little for breakfast this morning as well. And I gotta tell you, everybody talks about cold pizza, cold pizza. I love cold pizza. Um, I think that the best pizza is hot pizza, fresh from, you know, f freshly cooked. I think the second best pizza is cold pizza. I think the third best pizza is pizza from the night before that you heat up. I would rather have cold pizza than warm up the pizza for two reasons. One is you get it in your mouth immediately. The other one is, um, it's almost like when you order pizza, you get two different cuisines. You get a hot cuisine, you get a cool cuisine. You know, you get two foods for the price of one. Fried chicken, most people don't talk about, like, cold fried chicken. I'm telling you, there's something about it. It's It's got, like, a, a different uh, je ne sais quoi to it, if you will. So I'm, I'm going to be 
very aggressive here, and, and I'm extremely stoked by the aggression. Um, we got Death's List, which is whatever. It's not that good. Um, we got... Uh, but maybe we can make it work. We got Judas' Shadow, which we're going to pop immediately, because we're going to try to take advantage of all the... Uh, Come on, man. We're going to try to take advantage of all the prayer card access we can get. Uh, and Empty Vessel is amazing as well. We're not going to be able to really use Empty Vessel. Because we're not going to be on zero HP. Like, it kind of runs counter to what we're... Uh, to what our game plan is. But it's a great, like, long-term item for us either way. Alright. So, like... It's just a substantially better run. And I suppose for a floor... You know, for one floor, we can do whatever we want with Empty Vessel. We can fly. Is a vampire. So yeah, that's what's been on my mind. Cold cuisine. Cold chicken. It won't be. I'm gonna get out of my head. <laughs> Sorry, this is uh, Tom Waits. Uh, cold women and warm beer from Nighthawks at the Diner. It's very easy to do a Tom Waits impression from that era. Now, I don't possess, like, the robot pharynx required to make it work. Um, but from the, from the 1970s, you just go, Warm oh, women, cold beer. I'm just gonna get, a, get out of my mirror. I've been doing a me and a me and a move. I've been a squirming out of my hole. You might be like, I don't you're not saying anything. Yeah, but on the other hand, am I not, like, saying everything that needs to be said? Yeah, exactly. Let's, uh, against my better judgment, let's do this. It'll be fun. Nope. See you later. We're not gonna do the reroll room, because I'm actually, like, incredibly stoked with what we got going on here. Plus, we just went through all that hassle to get, like, the Dark Judas power-up. No thank you. I choose not to. I choose not to. And apart from that, um, pretty, you know, standard, really. <laughs> Anecdotally, very few things uh, going on. Been playing a little chess in my uh, in my off time. I gotta tell you, like, I, I think it says something about me that uh, I think as of right now, my my highest rating is in 10 minutes aside, which is a, a really good amount of time. You know, you you get time to think about things, but, you know, I mean, I, I was never, even as a kid, maybe even especially as a kid, was never a fan of, like, you know, 90-minute aside chess or even, like, you know, increment chess. I just, like, I wanted to play as many games as possible. But 10 minutes aside is, like, a you, you get some fairly good chess. You know, you, people are not hanging pieces, oh, I, people at a certain level of acumen at least, are not just hanging pieces left, right, and center. Um, but at the same time, you don't have to wait 20 minutes for everybody to make their move. One minute is like a completely different game. Like, you play people in one minute chess, bullet chess, that literally are not even playing chess anymore. They, they're basically just hooked up to like a dopamine slot machine. They pre-move all of their moves. Um, but they don't actually, like, execute any sort of plan or respond to anything you're doing. They're just trying to time you out. Literally from the very start. Now, the clock is a weapon, don't get me wrong. Just like the world is a vampire, the clock is a weapon. But I, I, I always love playing against people. Not to say I win every game, but, you know, I, I love playing against people who just don't pay attention to what you do at all. Because you just set up, like, incredibly basic, obvious mates. But they've already made their pre-moves, like, 22 seconds ago. And they're like, oh, crap. Stats, baby. Because the good stats are a little old place where we could get together good stats. You know, like the B-52s. Here's what I'll say about the B-52s. Rock Lobster, Love Shack. Don't love them as, as far as songs go. But the B-52s first album, the self-titled is probably, like, it, it makes them one of the most misunderstood bands by the mainstream media, in my opinion. People are of the impression that essentially they just made novelty songs, including the Rocco's Modern Life theme song. It's not the case. They were, they were progenitors of the new wave as well. 
Just because a couple of their songs were memes, hey, that, you know, that doesn't take away, uh, doesn't take away all their street cred, in my opinion. Plus, like, I prefer their weirder songs, but when they wanted to, they could, they could get a sensible pop, uh, ditty out there. Like, Rome is one of, that's like one of my favorite grocery store songs. Read the groceries. It's like a song you probably wouldn't put on, you know, at home and be like, yo, you gotta listen to this. But if it comes on when you're like shopping for bananas, you're like, you know, take it hip to hip, rocking through the wilderness. You know, you're like, I'm, I'm pogged up. You know what? I might even buy an extra bunch. It's a good song, in my opinion. They're good songs, Bront. But yeah, I mean, apart from that, it's been, uh, you know, day in, day out, relatively similar. Still have to constantly, you know, except for the fact that it's getting colder, I have to constantly remind myself that it's actually, like, December. I've never had such a weird relationship with time. There are days where it feels like it's still July to me, and then there are days where it feels like uh, we've been in the same year for a decade. And, uh, you know, it's... Uh, I think it's understandable, but mostly just been keeping myself busy, doing a lot of work, taking care of the baby, and then laughing at the outrageous review discrepancy between Cyberpunk on the PlayStation uh, 4 and Cyberpunk on the PC. I don't know if I have ever seen in my life before a game get reviewed, have a larger score discrepancy between two different platforms. Occasionally there would be situations like in the early 2000s, like a company would come out with a game for like the PS2 and then they would also come out with like a Game Boy Color version that had like, wasn't even like a reasonable facsimile. It was like, like I always think of like the first Tony Hawk's Pro Skater game. Um, you know, it was a 3D action sports game. Very happy to get that permanent tears upgrade for sure. Um, the Game Boy Color version, not the Game Boy Advance version, which I have very fond memories of. Um, the Game Boy Color version was like a weird, almost like, um, like one of those three-lane dodging games, like a temple run sort of thing, where you, you did do tricks, but for the most part, the game was like, hey, don't get, you know, don't run into a garbage can. So I imagine there was probably some discrepancy there, um, but for sure... I mean, like, it's getting, like, like 50s or, or even 40s on PS4, which I can understand why, because I've, you know, seen some of the screenshots. And then, like, close to 90 on PC. It's, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's a rare case as far as game reception goes. I, by the way, I, I'm not saying, like, you got a feel for CD Projekt Red, but it does really put it into perspective that, like, the game barely, you know, seems... It, it, maybe even less than barely seems playable. It might actually be unplayable uh, on the last generation consoles. Um, which is very funny to think about in some ways. It's not funny if you spend money on it, but... It, I, well, I don't know. I don't control what makes you laugh. Clearly, your judgment is in questions. <laughs> I'm joking, okay? Um, but, uh, you know, when I, I always think about the fact that, like, when that first Cyberpunk trailer came out, it was, like, January or February 2013, which was, like, fully a year and a half. No, I'm trying to... It was either at like a like nine months or a year and nine months before the new consoles even got announced. <laughs> so, the game had been in development for like the entirety of that console cycle. In some way, I understand they were also working on The Witcher Three for like half of that time or a third of that time. But it's just there's something there's something very wild about that. I imagine that's got to cause some problems for morale at the company, right? Like, when you you start working on a project before the new consoles are even announced, and then you realize that you're going to... You spent the entire generation working on it. It's an ambitious game, don't get me wrong. I, I've watched... Uh, like, I've said it before, we don't need to talk about it ad nauseum. You may already be nauseated, but... Um, 
I, I've, I've said it before, like we've talked about Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk's not the game for me, but I'm not rooting for like... I mean, it's already out and, you know, I don't have any control over that to begin with, whether it is received well or badly. But I'm not I'm rooting for the game's demise. Like, you know, I'm not 12 years old. I don't, I don't care... If, if anything, it's easy to say, but I would rather the game be amazing, even if it's not exactly my cup of tea or something that I'm interested in, because, you know, uh, it's just nice to see people that have been looking forward to something for so long actually feel like it delivered for them, right? That being said, you know, having watched some of it, I'm like, it, it seems uh, on the PC and on next-gen consoles, at least. Or, I don't even know if it's on next-gen consoles. I guess I've been watching people play on PC. Um, it still very much is, is not my cup of tea. But it, it, I could see why people would be fans of it, for sure. Seems cool. I'm not just saying that so that when CD Projekt Red releases their next game in 2035, they consider putting me in as a cameo. Hey, it's Bald Eggman. He sells ramen noodles in a stand in Night City. On the other hand, though, yo, can you imagine the subreddit? Look who I found in Cyberpunk. And then, like, you know, my face is upside down because the textures didn't load in right. That'd be pretty pog. Like, I, I don't want to get controversial, but I, I'd be pretty pogged about that. I mean, I have my own uh, show in Fall Guys, but, I mean, come on. To be in Cyberpunk 2079? That's right, they're going to skip a year. Why? Because they're a good student. You ever skip a grade? I wonder what percentage of people watching this skip the grade. This is not a flex. It would be a very strange flex for sure. I, I was in discussion to skip a grade at one point. I was on the borderline. I, and I, again, I don't mean this to come across as, like, an ego drip or something. Like, I, I'll be the first to tell you. Uh, if, if, you know, I, I really don't think I'm that intelligent. I think the reason I did pretty well in school, especially the first, you know, 10 years of school, is 100% down to the fact that my parents read to me all the time. So I digested a lot of, like, I, I, you know, without being too dramatic about it. I was, like, well-read by four-year-old standards. And then I, that made me want to read more myself. And reading is such, like, a core skill in, in all your scholastic endeavors at that age. <clears throat> that I, I think it's just, like, it, it gives you a big head start. But, um, so I, I was in contention to skip a grade. Um, but uh, my, my parents and the teachers opted not to. And I, I'm always, to be honest with you, I'm always glad they did. If, if you skip the grade, I'm not saying like you made the wrong choice or the wrong choice was perhaps more aptly made for you. Um, but I was already, like I have a late November birthday, so I was always like one of the five youngest kids in my class. And uh, to, to add like one year on top of that, I think it would have been, I don't want to say negative, but... Maybe wouldn't have been worth it. Plus, like, you know, you're not really skipping that much. Oh, you skipped third grade. Okay, what are we going to read in fourth grade? The same thing, you know? Just a, you just swap the books out slightly. Now we're going to multiply numbers up to 13 instead of 12. But uh, I also think, like, already... I don't... It depends on the school system. And again, I don't want to act like I had it hard, right? But I do think... I bet if you looked at, like, a demographic study of it, I bet people with birthdays closer to the start of the calendar year, like January, for example, will report having statistically significantly more positive high school experiences than people that didn't, that, that were born towards the end of the year, I should say. What makes me say that? Well, like, when I was in high school... I turned 14 halfway through ninth grade, right? So then you can do the math. Grade 10, I turned 15. Grade 11, I turned 16. And grade 12, I turned 17. Like, you're, you're always just... Those are major milestones when you're a kid. When you're a teenager, I should say. You know, like, learning to drive, being able to... You know, sometimes being 17 or 18 carries different, uh, you know, uh, privileges as well, depending on, you know, when you're... Or where you live, like, 
I can't remember. I think it's like there's something with driving in Ontario, where it's like if you're if you're 16, obviously you can't have your full driving driving license, but like you can only have one passenger under the age of 18 in the car at any given time or something like that. Um, you know, they make like a big difference, and to constantly like always be on the trailing edge. I, I'm just gonna say, I think it made my social life take a little bit of a hit, you know? Because it gives all the power for social gatherings to the people that have early birthdays and actually get their driver's licenses, especially if you live in the suburbs or a rural area, right? If you lived in, in downtown Manhattan and you took the subway everywhere, then I'm, I'm sure that this all seems very strange to you. Um... It was like, you know, we, I might have been, like, pretty good friends with somebody with an early birthday. But then, you know, all of a sudden, circumstances change when uh, their birthday comes around. They get their, uh, their G2, which allows them to drive uh, unsupervised. And um, all of a sudden, people are like, hey, uh, can you take your dad's Ford Bronco and drive me to this? I got an extra ticket. Can you drive me to this? It's kind of the same in uh, in university as well. Like, you know, I, I had a fun time in university. Probably more fun than I should have had. Should have been a little bit more focused on my on my studies. Now, the the flip side of that is that if I had been more focused on my studies and had a more definite career path following undergrad, I probably wouldn't have gone to teach English in South Korea, which means I would probably not be as happy in my career <laughs> as I am now because I wouldn't uh, have had the, the maybe the time or the ambition, I guess, to become a to, to uh, approach this YouTube stuff, but anyway, like, you know, we're, we're not doing Gwyneth Paltrow's sliding doors stuff here, we're trying to be instructive. But in, in university, like, so many of my friends had their uh, 19th birthday party, and 19 is the age where you're allowed to, you know, legally go to the bars and also buy alcohol at, like, you know, liquor stores and stuff like that. Um, hold on, let me see what's in here. I just, yeah, yeah, okay, this is really good. Obviously. And, you know, it's like when you're 18 and you're you're sneaking a couple of Alexander Keiths in under the, the RA's noses, you're like, oh, we're all in this together. Then January 6th rolls around and it's Anna's 19th birthday and she's like, I'm out. <laughs> and then it, it only gets worse as the February and the March birthdays roll around. And eventually, you know, it's it's October and it's just you and the other like... You know, somebody that was born on Christmas, and then somebody that skipped a grade, and you're hanging out together, going like, oh, I hope they're having, I hope they don't have too much fun without us. And then by the time your 19th birthday rolls around, you're like, I want to go out to the worst bar in the city. And they're like, I'm already over that. Can't we just stay inside and play Catan? It's all a rip, dude. So I'm happy our daughter, she's born in September. You know, it's not an early birthday, but it is, uh... Is at the point where it's kind of it's close to the midpoint. Let's put it that way. I don't think you you face too much. I don't think you get too much benefit. I don't think you get too much cost out of it. I will say I always think that about sports though too. Like I don't know when sports cutoffs are, but I always think back to like I used to play baseball. Right, I played baseball for like ten years. Playing baseball with a November birthday was like highly cursed. When you're seven years old. Somebody being born 11 months after somebody else that's in the same, like, age cohort. It's like, you know, like 15% of your life it, extra. They're, they're out here, like, I'm pitching little softballs at them, and they're cranking them out of the park. And you're like, well, hey, can't you throw it faster? They got, like, 20% more muscle than me. They've been, they've been on Earth for 20% for longer. I do wonder if you looked at, like, um like professional athletes, I can't necessarily say that a higher percentage of them would be born in the first few months of the year, but I, I bet I would not be surprised to see more of them born close to the very earliest possible cutoffs, or the earliest possible days after their cutoffs, you know what I mean, or before their, you know what I, like if, if a, a, a hockey league takes in people um, that were born between, you know, like, October 1st, 1995, and uh, September 30th, 1996, I bet you would see more late 1995 birthdays than you'd see 1996 birthdays, like, up to the top of the draft class. That's just my... Because I, I think this is how it works. It's not to say you couldn't be born a little bit later and just be, you know, naturally talented. But you do have, like, almost a... 
All other things being equal, which they aren't always, but in this case, you know, if you're looking at a large enough sample size, all other things being equal, you know, the older a kid gets, the the larger they get, the more muscle they have, the taller they get, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Even like I would say, the more intellectually capable they get to some extent, you know, their brains are growing like crazy. Um, and then on top, so then you might be like, yeah, but what does that matter when they're like 17 or 18? Well, you know. I don't necessarily think it matters as much at that age, if at all, if there's even an observable effect. But then there's the thing like when you're when you're a kid, you know, you want to do things for the most part that are fun. And what's fun is things that you're good at. And I think if you, you know, have a if you've got a five percent advantage in a in a sport because you were born in January, um, then that makes you that much more likely to do well at it and to be rewarded. People will be like, wow, you're so good, and then that feels good. And then you're like, I'm going to practice more of this so I can be even better. And then, you know, it wouldn't, so I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me. Now, that's not how science works, but I have the, uh, the privilege of not being a scientist, so I can raise conjecture. I'm not saying, like, this is how the world is. I'm merely suggesting that, um... Were I to observe that effect, it wouldn't surprise me. Now, I don't know if there's been any studies done on it or anything, but... Similarly, I wonder if you, like, looked at, um... Like, the average age of, uh... The average birth month of, like, valedictorians. I almost wonder if you wouldn't find, like, more valedictorians are born towards the end of the year. Because after they get body checked until all their bones break, they're like, You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna become very good at math. And that's how I'm gonna build up my self-image. I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. I'm sure, like, you don't need to counter-argue uh, to the extent that, like, Oh, well, you know, I'm pretty smart and I was born in February. What are you trying to say? That's not really what I'm trying to say. I mean, you know, I'm sure there's tons of uh, anecdotal counter-evidence. And there may even be empirical counter-evidence as well. I'm mostly just making conversation, but... What I'm trying to say is, like, if you were born in June or July, you're screwed. Because you're... <laughs> not the most, you know, physically imposing, but then also, you know... I don't know what the benefit of a late birthday is. I guess maybe... Uh, again, all of the things being equal, if you looked at uh, a large enough data set, you'd probably be like, well, they do tend to live, I guess, like, that much longer. Let me out. Alright, this is a great run. I'm, I'm very pleased with this one. Had a lot of fun. We had some goofs, some gaffs, and a lot of laughs. We got the mom transformation, obviously outrageously valuable. Does it bother anybody else that Linger Bean is like, um... Well, I was gonna say Linger Bean is the only bean that's a passive. That's not true, though. There's also, uh, Black Bean. But... Does it bother anybody else that not all the beans are, are passive or active, I guess is what I should say? You know what else has been bugging me? Are refried beans actually refried at all? Because, like, let me put it this way. Doesn't it depend on your frame of reference? If you're ordering from Chipotle, for example, and they ask you what kind of beans do you want in your burrito, you got black beans, you got red beans, um, and you got refried beans. But that doesn't a refried bean imply that the black beans and red beans are already fried? Which they are not. They're not. They're just soaked, you know? And then you maybe warmed up. I'm under the impression that refried beans are not actually fried at all. They're actually, they've just been mashed. Is that correct? I will admit, this is a new area for me. I, I, a relatively new area. I genuinely don't think I ate any uh, Mexican food that was not just microwavable nachos. Uh, until I was in my 20s. So I'm, I'm really, I'm making up for lost time. I love a refried bean. I do also understand it is, like, by far the worst bean for you, nutritionally, with the exception maybe of jelly beans, but those don't grow in the ground, to the best of my knowledge. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this one. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal, of course. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!